like to bring to the show my next guest this morning, Matt Mali, Managing Director at Miller Tobacco. Good morning, Matt, and thank you so much for joining us. Great, thanks for having me, Alex. Matt, so many stories today. We don't even know where to start. Um, where to start from? I just want to start very quickly with Tesla because it's very interesting what we're seeing in pre-market trading. It's up about six percent yesterday. Closed down about nine uh, percent. So, um, are we heading to a bear market? Well, it certainly seems that way. I mean, one thing we do have to be a little careful is we've seen in 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 the past or a couple of, or several times where Tesla has traded down significantly in the pre-market trading only to bounce back very, very strongly, uh, you know, after the market actually opens. And it opens in about, what, about half an hour, less than a half an hour. So we'll see what how, how it trades through the day. Uh, the thing is, yesterday it did not trade well. It traded obviously down, was down almost 9%, and closed re very near its lows, basically right at its lows. Uh, so if we don't get that kind of snapback rally, it's going to be important because it has broken a couple of important support levels. Number one, uh, we had a, uh, up, uh, up at the uh, 800 level, we had this... Um, excuse me, the uh, uh, the neckline of a head and shoulders pattern. So on a technical basis, that was negative. But more importantly, we've also had the 50-day moving average. That has provided really, really good support for Tesla uh, for many, many months. It bounced strong, strongly off that, that line, basically every chance it's had since last April. But now it's broken below that line. So uh, now it did break below it very slightly in November on two different occasions and then bounced back very, very quickly. So that was good. Uh, so sometimes, you know, it was a little bit of a head fake when it when it broke below it. This one's a much more significant break. So if this stock doesn't bounce back up, back above that 50-day moving average, uh, basically immediately within the next dip to today or tomorrow, uh, it's going to signal that the that the near-term trend for Tesla has indeed turned down. Now that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Doesn't mean Tesla's going to you know the 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 great rally in Tesla is over. Uh, as we've seen many times, usually a couple of times in a year, uh, corrections, uh, deep corrections of 30% or more are, are very uh, normal and common in this stock. Uh, but if it can't bounce back immediately, it's going to show that uh, uh, we're probably going to see uh, that kind of a, a deep decline before uh, this can stabilize here on the near-term basis. So uh, what Wedbush said is really interesting statement. Do you agree with that, that Tesla share price is now directly linked to the price of Bitcoin? Well, you know, I, I actually thought it already had been, to be honest with you, because I think they both are very much a sign of uh, what's going on in, in terms of liquidity in the marketplace. And uh, because they've been really a lot of that excess liquidity has gone into these two assets. But of course, now I think Dan is right. The, uh, they've become more tightly linked because of the investment that that Tesla has made uh, in the cryptocurrency, and, and so far, you know, they actually make more more money right so far or lately uh, lately off of their investment in that than they have in making building their own cars. Uh, so that makes it you know, you know very dicey. A bit coins another thing that's seeing some some weakness today, as you mentioned. And uh, if it uh, falls further, uh, uh, it's going to have some problems for Tesla. But, uh, you know, they were already kind of linked. And uh, it's kind of a sign of this, 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 this whole, you know, kind of froth in the market on a near-term basis. And one of the reasons why I think that, uh, you know, a, a, a correction is lightly in the broad market uh, over the coming weeks and months. Well, that's, um, that's very interesting. On the other side, I just wanted to show you very quickly a few retail stocks, uh, stocks sorry, retail stocks, uh, starting with Macy, which is up about 2.68%. On the other side, um, of course, we do see a totally opposite direction of Home Depot in pre-market trading after the earnings results, which were positive for both stocks, I shall say, well above Wall Street estimates. What, what's your take on the retail sector overall? Well, I mean, the, the big the big question is going to be what happens with this whole thing on with the new wave. If we get another new wave of the coronavirus, I mean, not a lot of people on Wall Street are talking about it, but we are hearing it in the in the medical community that they worry that these new variants are going to cause another wave. Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to cause, at least from what they're saying. And again, I'm not a doctor or a scientist, but uh, from what they're saying. Uh, it's not going to cause a lot more deaths, but it could cause another big increase in hospitalizations. And if that happens, and you have a big crisis in the healthcare sector, in the hospital sector, uh, and they're overwhelmed, they're going to have to lock down the economy. Maybe not to the same degree that they did last year, but they're going to have to do it again. If that happens, then you get you know another problem for the retail sector because the people are going to worry about uh, not just being able to sit at home, but more importantly, that they're going to worry about are, you know those who are unemployed. Are they going to be able to get a job when this thing finally does run to an end? So I'm a little bit cautious on the retail sector, but I must admit I'm, I'm a little surprised by Home Depot's reaction. Um, 
I mean, part of that, of course, is the fact that they didn't give guidance. So that's a little bit of a concern, but the, that's a legitimate unknown for them. They just, you know, as I just mentioned, we don't really know if there's going to be another uh, a wave of this coronavirus. You know, not a lot of people on Wall Street are talking about it, but uh, Home Depot, you know, they're a smart company. They know what's going on there. Uh, but, we, you know, we just have to notice that we have lumber prices, you know, at all time highs breaking above a thousand dollars. That's usually a good sign for Home Depot. So, uh, you know, I, I still think uh, um, that uh, you know, Home Depot is is uh, is a good play here, and it's a little bit different than some of the other retailers, obviously, because they're more in the the home improvement and things rather than uh, consumer demand. Yeah, it is. Um, on the other hand, one of the most important um, events today is, is Trump Powell's hearing ahead of Congress. Um, he's going to try to reassure Marcus that everything is fine. On the other hand, we do see some very interesting stuff. For example, the spread between the two-year Treasury yield and a key interest rate um, set by the Fed is the narrowest since the depths of the coronavirus market sell-off. Are you concerned about it? Um, and, and do you think that the Fed might tolerate higher uh, Treasury yields? I think they will. I, uh, although I don't think that uh, Chairman Powell is really going to talk about that today. He's going to try to calm the markets. That's been kind of his, uh, that's definitely been his job. He's been very dovish uh, for several months now, uh, you know, at the end of last year and early this year. But there's also no, also no question that other people in the Fed, uh, is, I think it's kind of a little bit of a coordinated effort to say, hey, we're okay with higher inflation, which means that they're okay with higher interest rates. They're, so they're trying to pl play this little bit of a, a, a balancing act where, you know, they're, they hint, you know, they're, 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 I think what the overall they're telling us, they're, they're willing to accept higher interest rates. If, if Chairman Powell says that today, then that's going to really cause some, some problems because he's been quite dovish lately. Uh, and he, but he may indicate that if he's saying, you know, if he's willing to say that, you know, reiterate that the, the Fed is willing to uh, tolerate a higher levels of inflation uh, over a longer period of time. So uh, it, it's definitely a, a balancing act. The, the whole thing what the Fed is trying to do right now is they're trying to let interest rates rise a little bit, uh, but it, and they rise gradually. That's the key for them. Just like they had in 2013, they don't want another taper tantrum. They want a nice gradual uh, uh, rise. So I think he'll try to placate those things. And the, and the bond market is oversold, which means the interest rates, the yields are a little bit overbought. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if interest rates came down a little bit after he speaks today, but uh, I think he'll try to calm the markets even more. But to answer your question more directly, over time, they are going to let interest rates rise a little bit, uh, and they just want it to be in a more gradual fashion. So I'm very happy that you brought up the, 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 the taper tantrum um, story. Do you think that the concerns regarding the taper tantrum are a little bit exaggerated at this point? Well, I mean, uh, it, at some point, it's interesting because uh, former uh, New York Fed President uh, uh, Dudley, I mean, he's not saying this, that, you know, we're going to have, we have to taper back. I mean, you can't, when, when the economy completely reopens, you can't keep providing all this crazy liquidity. Then you're guaranteed to have unbelievable levels in, of inflation. They don't want, you know, really skyrocketing inflation. Or they don't mind higher inflation. They just don't want skyrocketing inflation. And that's what they'll have. They'll have to taper back. And as, as uh, President Dudley said, New York Fed, or former New York Fed President Dudley said, uh, uh, "There will be a an, an reaction." He did say there will be a tan there will be a tantrum. There'll be a taper tantrum. You know what they're hoping is it won't be like it was in May and June of 2013 when that initial thing took place. What they want is a more gradual one, so that when they actually do taper back, that that will already be priced in. So I guess my point is that uh, I do believe it's a concern. I do believe it will cause uh, interest rates to move higher, and eventually. The stock market is going to is going to have to price that in, and it's going to have to come in. I mean, the point is, the bond market is starting to price in a tapering back of of uh, a Fed QE program at some point. You know, the the markets are a discounting factor; they always move before the actual event, and the the bond market is already doing it. It's only a matter of time before the stock market does it. That would be normal and healthy, and I, I think it will lead to a you know a, a, a relatively deep uh, pullback. But it's not you know the, to avoid a bear market, you 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 still have to let some air out of this froth in the marketplace, and I think a, a, a correction uh, is uh, is inevitable. So uh, you're saying that it's still possible to avoid a bear market considering the higher trade yields and not only, of course, inflation expectations. Yeah, I think we can avoid a bear market, but I think it's going to be very, very difficult to avoid a correction of 15 to 20 percent. I mean, some people are saying, 
And I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, we might get a 10% correction, but with the amount of leverage in the marketplace, we have margin debt, you know, we all know margin debt at all time highs. Uh, you'll start to get a few margin calls in there. And that's why I do think it'll be more severe than just an eight to 10% pullback. Because margin calls don't come and, uh, and that forced selling doesn't come until the market's already fallen a decent amount. If the market stays up, they don't get those margin calls. And, it, and just for, so, I think a 10% correction will will have no choice but to go down 15 or even a little bit more than 15%. Uh, that'll be okay. And I think because the Fed is still providing liquidity, it's not like they're going to pull the plug completely. They'll taper back gradually. Uh, they'll still be planning plenty, uh, plenty of liquidity uh, to prevent a serious bear market or, or the kind of, I mean, basically we had a, a kind of a crash last year. It didn't happen all in one day, but it happened in a month where the market fell 35%, I think uh, the global central banks will be able to avoid that from happening because they're already providing some liquidity in the, in the marketplace. All right. Thank you very much. Matty Mali, Managing Director at Murder Tobacco. Thank you for joining us and have a great day ahead. It's going to be an interesting yeah. one, that's for sure. No question. Thank you, Alex. You too.